So what's his name? You guys said. Okay. Sorry. Why seven? Because you have to work for me. I know. But they didn't make it around my schedule. They didn't? Oh, well. How's this, how's this going, by the way? Great. Okay, good. For me, too. I just want to make sure you're not bored to tears over there. No, I've got three iPads and two laptops. Okay, great. Phones. So you have something to entertain you while I'm doing the show. Yes, I do. I've good. Got Welcome. I'm talking now. Welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Protests are continuing all over America. And if that makes you nervous, you might be a Confederate statue. As fans of the Union are tearing down these monuments all across the South, including last night in Richmond, Virginia, where protesters tore down a statue of Jefferson Davis. Or as Davis might put it, I hereby secede from my pedestal. And it's not just protesters. Yesterday, in a letter to her congressional colleagues, Speaker Nancy Pelosi called for the removal of Confederate statues from the U.S. Capitol. Um, what, huh? There are Confederate statues in the U.S. Capitol? Where do they keep them? In the Hall of Losers? Or did Ulysses S. Grant just capture Robert E. Lee in carbonite? In addition to statues, activists are targeting use of the stars and bars as symbols of racial intimidation, and they scored a major victory because last night NASCAR banned the display of the Confederate flag at its races and tracks. NASCAR is getting more progressive. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. All they do is turn left. Technically accurate observation. The move comes after pressure from race car driver and man with the most NASCAR name ever, Bubba Wallace. Wallace is NASCAR's only black driver. You can always tell which is his car because it's the one getting pulled over. All right, Mr. Wallace, uh, what are you doing in this neighborhood? All right, you can go. Earlier today, Wallace explained his opposition to the Confederate flag. To a group that is in a lot of pain right now, the African American community is in a lot of pain. That's a symbol of hate, and it brings back so many bad memories, signs of oppression uh, from from way back when. And it's just there's no good that comes with that flag. He's right. No good comes with it. In fact, it's such an unlucky flag that even the people who started it had to eventually replace it with this one. Now, Wallace puts his horsepower where his mouth is, because in a race yesterday, he took to the track in a Black Lives Matter themed car. That is sweet. Although, I'm going to fact check his fender because this has definitely not been a good year. NASCAR's got company because the U.S. Army recently announced that it is open to considering the removal of Confederate leaders' names from U.S. military bases. Well, that's reasonable, considering those men waged war on the U.S. military. It's one of the reasons the Navy renamed the USS Saddam Hussein. Now, these bases weren't named right after the Civil War. Back then, people knew these men were traitors to the Union. The bases got their names after all the Civil War veterans were dead at the height of Jim Crow. So this sounds like a slam dunk. I mean, only someone completely tone deaf to the continuing pain of black Americans who make up 20% of the U.S. Army would disagree. It has been suggested that we should rename as many as 10 of our legendary military bases, such as Fort Bragg in North Carolina, Fort Hood in Texas, Fort Benning in Georgia, etc. These monumental and very powerful bases have become part of a great American heritage and a dot, 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 history of winning victory and freedom. First, they didn't fight for freedom. Second, winning and victory are the same thing, and the Confederacy didn't do either of them. You'd know that if you weren't stupid and an idiot. I'm sorry, sir, you were dog whistling? My administration will not even consider the renaming of these magnificent and fabled military installations. Well, I guess it's not surprising that Trump's okay with naming things after old racist guys. He did name his own son Donald Trump. Now, yesterday, Trump got a little air cover from White House press secretary and cursed Bratz doll Kaylee McEnany. 
president will not be signing legislation that renames America's forts. Um, it's important to note, you know, Fort Bragg, for example, it's one of the largest military installations. It's home to tens of thousands of brave American soldiers. And when you think of Fort Bragg, we think of the brave soldiers that deployed from there. Yeah, you can't rename Fort Bragg. That's Trump's favorite verb. Next, you'd have to rename Fort Lie and Fort Cheat on your wife. Now, Trump's been itching to get out of the White House recently. He's got a bad case of bunker fever. So he's revving up his summer campaign bus tour with rallies in Florida, Oklahoma, Arizona, Texas, and North Carolina. I guess he just misses walking out to a large crowd that he hasn't tear gassed. His first rally takes place in Tulsa on June 19th, also known as Juneteenth, an annual holiday commemorating the end of slavery in the United States. And 99 years ago this month, Tulsa was the site of one of the country's bloodiest outbreaks of racial violence when white mobs attacked black citizens and businesses with guns and explosives. Now, to be fair, there's no way Trump knows that much American history. I'm pretty sure he just told Stephen Miller, Steve, pick the most offensive date and location you can think of and put it up there on my Hooters calendar. Ooh, this month is clam strips. Daddy like. Obviously, any public gathering is a public health risk due to coronavirus. Still, the Trump campaign is unlikely to put into place any social distancing measures for rally attendees or require them to wear masks. But as a precautionary measure, every attendee will be provided a syringe full of bleach. But Trump's defending bringing everyone together for a big time spittle fest. His advisors say that the recent Black Lives Matter protests in metropolitan areas will make it harder for liberals to criticize him. No, nah, it's still pretty easy to criticize him. Here, watch. <clears throat> Black Lives Matter protesters overwhelmingly wear masks, and they weren't protesting against wearing masks. Trump is specifically saying no masks, though he might make an exception for a hood. Another difference is that the Black Lives Matter protesters are outdoors where COVID spreads less easily. And Trump's rallies are almost always indoors. But Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin doesn't see a big difference, as he said yesterday. This distinction between indoor and outdoor seems a bit, uh, a bit random, and I don't know what people would do when it rains. He seems pretty confused by the concept of indoor and outdoor. Am I indoors or am I outdoors? Is it raining or are people just spitting on me because I'm Steve Mnuchin? Yeah. It's going to stick that way one day. Of course, the biggest Trump rally of all will be this summer's Republican convention, originally set to take place in Charlotte, North Carolina. But Trump changed his mind when they found out they care about the safety of their citizens because Governor Roy Cooper wants to maintain social distancing. But in a phone call, Trump told him, I don't want to be sitting in a place that's 50% empty. Oh, you didn't enjoy your inauguration? Are we not, are we not doing this one? I figured, I thought we would do it. Okay, we're not doing this one. So Trump said nuts to North Carolina and went looking for a city willing to risk its citizens' lives and allow a large-scale event amid the coronavirus pandemic, which is why the top contender could only be one place, Jacksonville, Florida. We all know their motto, what happens in Jacksonville is prohibited by health officials everywhere else. And what a convention it's going to be. Because last night, the Republican National Committee's executive panel voted to make no changes to its 2016 party platform, a platform that condemns the, quote, current president. Looks like Mitt Romney's not going to be sitting alone after all. Apparently, the GOP didn't think to update their statements from 2016 based on who was in the White House in 2020, which is why their official platform currently reads, quote, the current administration has abandoned America's friends and rewarded its enemies. Yes, the current administration has abandoned its friends. A couple of wives, too. Now, there may be one upside to this global pandemic because the coronavirus has gutted the price of coca a natural stimulant that is the building block of cocaine. That's right, the cocaine market has taken a huge hit. And not just because the N95 masks make it nearly impossible to do a bump in the bathroom at the club. 
Experts say that lockdowns and a huge drop in travel challenge the ability of cartels to move product by land, air, or sea. And they still haven't figured out a way to move coke over the internet, even though it seemed like a surefire idea last night when they were doing all that coke. So they can't move it by land, air, or sea, which leaves only one option. Mr. President, it is time for you to form a new branch of drug enforcement. Space Narcs! In space. No one has to tell you they're a cop. Now, the lack of buyers for their product has gotten so bad that growers are calling this the great coca crash of 2020, as opposed to the great cocaine crash, which happens about two hours after you run out of flake and realize you just put your life savings into a Spanish-Chinese fusion food truck. Speaking of bumping junk, sex. During this pandemic, New York City health officials want to lend you a helping hand. Because of restricted access to sexual health clinics, they're offering free home delivery of condoms and lube. Well, that is very thoughtful. But remember, when the delivery man comes, be careful about offering him a tip. The city health department has also released new guidelines for safer pandemic sex, saying wearing a face covering that covers your nose and mouth is a good way to add a layer of protection during sex. They even released this instructional video. That's nice to see Tom Cruise doing a PSA. The city offers common sense advice like, you are your safest sex partner. Unfortunately, also the laziest. Sorry, it's not my birthday. Mostly, they want you to avoid kissing or really doing anything face to face. So the officials are advising you to be creative with sexual positions and physical barriers like walls. Well, I never thought I would say this, but build the wall, build the wall. And if she's into that sort of thing, Lock her up. So New Yorkers, fill your bedside table with brick and mortar and warn your neighbors not to come a-knockin' if they hear you sheetrockin'. We've got a great show for you tonight. I'll be talking to Judd Apatow and Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Wes Lowry. But when we return, meanwhile, join us, won't you?